Hello everyone and welcome to my Minecraft tutorial. This is Season 2, Episode 1, and in this second season we're going to be talking about Roman architecture as per, you know, <laughs> the couple of dozen people who requested it. So, uh, yeah. Basically, this entire series is going to be, I'm going to say classical, just to play it safe. It'll be mostly Roman, but there will be some kind of Greek style thrown in, so I know I'll just get some history buffs complaining. So, uh, I'll play it safe by calling it classical architecture. And... Um, yeah, in this first episode, it's going to be pretty simple. We're just going to talk about some, uh, I suppose, basic principles of Roman design and Roman building in Minecraft. And then, moving on, we're going to give a tutorial of this house, which is an insula, which is a type of apartment block. So, um, yeah, I guess we'll get started on the building technique. So coming over here, you can see I've got some random blocks scattered about. And basically, I just wanted to give a, a brief kind of uh, history lesson on um, Roman building materials. The one most kind of widespread was concrete. Uh, concrete was invented by the Romans. I can't think of what century it was, first or second, I think. Um, and basically, it was widely used because very cheap, very easy to build. Um, easy to make, I should say. Um, and with buildings, you can just pour the concrete into wooden moulds and, you know, into whatever shape you need, let it dry, take off the moulds, and you can reuse the moulds, actually. <laughs> In, uh, so, it's uh, quite cheap, quite cost-effective, and very structurally sound as well. In some cases, they even use reinforced concrete, which is, uh, you know, when you stick some iron or, well, other metals into concrete, and it, uh, really strengthens it up, makes it less rigid, and um, so it's got a lot more give and take, which is much better for the structure overall. And um, on top of this concrete, sometimes they used thin slices of marble or limestone, and basically this gave the impression of a stone facade. Occasionally they did actually build the, uh, you know, the stone blocks and the stone bricks. Um, and one other thing worth noting is that in Minecraft, the closest you can get to limestone marble and smooth stone and uh, concrete I should say is smooth stone so uh, that's why I'm going to be using it very uh, very commonly um, just let me reset the time here so that I get a bit more light um, so yeah basically I'll be using that a lot in this texture pack it doesn't actually look that smooth but I think it's good because it gives kind of a you know a rough concrete -y effect so uh, it's quite nice um, Around the city of Rome itself, well, I, I suppose I should say, the Romans tended to use whatever building materials were, I suppose, most cost-effective um, for what they needed. And around the city of Rome itself, that was sandstone. Um, very widespread, so very commonly used. Um, so, you know, it's just something worth bearing in mind. I also just want to talk about... Uh, oh, sorry, I also should say the, uh, the roofs were traditionally tile. So, in Minecraft, I'm using regular run-of-the-mill whatever alpha they came in, um, ordinary bricks. So, uh, something worth bearing in mind. Talking a little bit about the structure, um, basically I tend to do the walls pretty much the same. Um, generally use sandstone, I will occasionally use, you know, stone bricks and smooth stone for the actual walls, but, uh, in this instance you can see I've got some random, uh, <laughs> little pillars. Um, and basically the Romans like to use vertical lines a lot in their structures. So, in this one I'm putting in concrete pillars, um, which doesn't look very good, but, you know, I suppose the reason it doesn't look very good is because it's a tiny little shack in the middle of nowhere. Um, so yeah, one of the other things worth bearing in mind is when you're building Roman houses, basically, they very rarely had windows that faced the street. For whatever reason, if it was privacy, if there was some law against it, I'm honestly not too sure, but um, generally, if this was the road, um, you wouldn't have a window here. They just, very rare, um, if they did have windows facing the street, it would be on the first or second floor. Um, generally, Roman houses with windows would tend to have them facing the, uh, you know, private gardens or whatever they had behind, more kind of private area. Um, that's really the only areas you'll find windows in, so if I, you know, if someone does wonder why I'm lacking in windows in some areas, that's why. Um, so there you go. <laughs> Yeah, aside from that, the only other kind of noteworthy thing in Roman architecture in Minecraft is uh, the very kind of 
I suppose the low slant of the roofs. And the way you do this is pretty simple. It's just alternate between um, half slabs and full bricks instead of using stairs because uh, it just it gives a much more gradual slope. It looks a lot nicer and um, well, I suppose it looks more authentic as well, which is the main kind of purpose of these you know tutorials. So um, yeah, that's the other thing worth bearing in mind. So uh, I guess let's get started on the first tutorial. So as I mentioned earlier, this is an insula, and an insula is a, I suppose, Roman apartment block would be the best description for it. It's very low cost housing, very widely used, and um, each building was divided up on the inside into uh, different units, um, which is, I suppose, the reason why it's uh, it's like an apartment block. Usually had a bit of an open area out in the front, and um, this is partially just for shade and somewhere to hang out during the day. Um, it also allowed the street to be a bit wider, um, and as well as that, it um, it could be used to set up little market stalls if you lived here. So quite handy. Um, coming in, this is just one of the units on the ground floor. You can see I've used some concrete, some logs, and uh, basically the reason for that is that these are the kind of poorer areas of housing, so um, they don't necessarily have the build best uh, building materials. They do sometimes look a bit crappy. Coming up on the first floor, you can see we've got some, uh, some more apartments. These are all kind of self-contained units. Got a bunk bed here, some shelves and a little table. Um, Oops. You know, all very self-contained and uh, quite utilitarian. Um, on the outside we have a terrace, which is a little seating area. You can put these around the back if you like, which would actually probably be a bit more accurate, but um, I, <laughs> I find aesthetically it doesn't look too good. But um, if you're going for the historical accuracy over the aesthetic look, then uh, I'd say stick the terrace on the back and just, you know, I suppose just rotate the entire upper floor. But um, I'll leave that up to you. Anyway, for this tutorial, um, we're going to take a 16 by 16 plot like we did with uh, the previous series, if you remember that one. Anyone remember? Um, but yeah, basically, we're going to lay out 16 by 16 plot. We'll stick a road in at the front. Um, so that's going to be too wide, made a cobble. Um, and then basically the pattern that you see with the grass and the dirt is where pillars are going to be. And that's the easiest way to, uh, to lay it out. I have used stone bricks here, but you can pretty much use whatever you want in the center. Um, it's just the floor of the actual building, so, you know, whatever suits you. So uh, basically you're going to build up pillars from all these uh, spots. And uh, it's a pretty simple pattern to follow because it's basically a pillar just next to the road, then skip two, another pillar, skip two, skip two, blah, blah, blah. And uh, that pattern continues all the way along. The pillars on the first floor are going to be three high like you can see over here and um, basically if you go around the entire edge build them up three high and then um, add in a second row of pillars all the way through and then coming in again we're going to add more pillars um, but leave a gap here because this is where the stairwell is going to go so um, I'll just kind of hover over here for a second so you can pause the video and uh, take a look if you want if you're having trouble figuring this out but uh, Bear in mind, it's a pretty simple grid. It's just gaps of two between everything, so uh, shouldn't be too hard to figure out. Um, and basically, yeah, next you fill in the walls with sandstone or whatever material you want to use. In this case, I've used sandstone on the outside, and then on the inside, I've just used wooden paneling um, just to kind of give it a cheaper look, a bit nastier look. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it for that phase. So coming over here, you can see we've added a sandstone terrace, and so basically this goes on top of the front row of pillars, and it extends up into this point. And in addition, we've added a ring of double slabs all around the edge, and just to kind of square it off and give a nice effect. It also breaks up the facade on the sides and later on, so quite nice. Then we fill in the floor with wooden planks, except for over here because this is where the stairwell is going to go. So um. Yeah, basically just put in a 2x2 two two square there um, on this edge of the wall and then leave a gap up until the end where you put in two more planks. In this next phase, um, we've built up some more pillars. Basically these are three high on the corners and five high 
for the two in the center. Um, and this gives kind of a nice effect. The interior you can basically divide up however you want, but in this case I've used, well I suppose using the uh, the one you saw originally. Uh, if you just lay out a pattern like this, basically the walls, which I'll show you in a sec, are going to go in the middle of these and it'll uh, divide it up nicely. But as I said, you can divide it up however you want. Just bear in mind this is an apartment block, you can make the units as big or as small as you like. So um, yeah, it's really up to you. So yeah, now that we've filled in the walls, you can see that there's going to be two different apartments on this uh, top floor. I've left enough space for pretty much anyone, so uh, yeah, just something worth bearing in mind. We've also filled in the walls in this pattern, uh, leaving space for doors. And basically the walls are going to be four high on the inside, and then five high in the middle. Um, and yeah, that's basically just so that it'll fit in with the roof nicely, there won't be any gaps. Um, we've used sandstone again, and wooden planks in the interior, so, you know, <laughs> just in case you can't see. Though, I guess if you can't see, I don't know why you're watching a video. It kind of, you know, defeats the purpose. Anyway, so yeah, that's basically it for the, the basic house. I've knocked a couple of windows in the front um, and chucked in a door to the terrace. Um, you can vary this as much as you want. It's not really uh, set in stone, for lack of a better pun. Um, bearing in mind the slanting roof I showed you how to do earlier, I'm just going to do it again so you can see how it would fit in with this building. Um, so yeah, just alternate between full blocks and half slabs, and then it gives this nice long slope, um, which I suppose just looks kind of, um, not exclusively Roman, it just it looks very Roman. So yeah, for detailing, I've added some uh, upside down wooden half slabs, which are so handy, um, I love them to bits now. So thank you for that Jeb on 1.2. Um, they just add a bit more detail, um, then make it look like the sandstone is actually supported, so that's you know, always a bonus. Um, in the front I've added wooden stairs instead of half slabs, just for aesthetic effects really. Um, it's up to you of course, however you want to build it. Um, then coming inside, the way we did the, uh, the stairs is pretty simple. It's basically, if you lay out your stairs like you normally would, um, which I'll do here, so you know, I'll use the wall, place some stairs, and basically on the underside, you can place some upside down stairs. If you want to get whoop, if you want to get the one on the bottom, you're going to have to dig down a bit. Um, so just remember to place it on top of the block, or on the bottom of the block, I should say. Um, and yeah, basically this gives a much kind of nicer effect. So um, sorry, I have to fix this or I'll, I'll get all OCD. Yeah. Anyway, for the interior of the actual apartments, you can pretty much furnish them as you like. In this one, I've just got a cauldron, a furnace, um, a bookshelf, some beds. And um, bear in mind. The insulae or apartments, whatever you want to call them, um, they're the lowest uh, kind of form of housing, I suppose. These people don't own their own slaves, they don't have a lot of property. It's, you know, it's your standard apartment. These are all furnished in different ways, but I mean, it's basically up to you. Um, if you're playing this on single player, then, you know, it's completely your choice. You could even turn this design into a bigger house for an individual. Or if you're playing on a server, then maybe you want to, uh, you know, let people have their own little apartments, charge some rent, have a Roman role play, role playing server, you know, do whatever you want. <laughs> Coming outside, we've just got some nice flower pots and very simple trap door, grass block. You can use dirt, or you can build a stair of dirt from the grass and let one grow here. But that takes a long time, so uh, it's really your choice. We've also added a little table outside, just pressure plate. Um, fence and some chairs with signs, stairs with signs I should say. In addition uh, to the bottom of the roof I've just added some half brick uh, slabs, upside down slabs. Um, and these just kind of, I suppose, break up the uh, the uniformity of it. So um, oh yeah and iron bars in the windows. Anyway, um, yeah that's been the uh, first st uh, tutorial in this series so I hope you guys liked it. Um, so yeah <laughs> That's all for now. I'll see you guys next time.
So yeah, just a couple of quick announcements for this video. Um, basically, this is you know because it's the first episode of season two, I have to do a little news section. Um, as those of you who play survival with me know, I am fairly low on time at the moment, so apologies for the delay in getting this uh, this video out. But hopefully, there's more content on the way very very soon. It's all pretty much made, so you know it should be should be good. Oh, I've got some iron ore. Anyway, um. Yeah, in addition, I just wanted to give a couple of very brief announcements because the build-a-thon footage editing that I was doing has kind of been put on hold at the moment. Basically, the, ori the original video, which was the 11 and a half hour one, seems to have disappeared, which means that all the times and all the specific stuff I recorded for it um, has also disappeared. So uh, that's going to take some time to uh, try and recover. Um, oh yeah, and the texture pack. This is mine. No, just kidding. This is Sfax. Pure BD craft. Um, yeah, I, I am currently still working on a texture pack. It's it's. I suppose the the most accurate way to describe it would be I wanted to do what John Smith did really well, and I want to try and do it better. You know what I mean? I want to try and you know make something that looks really good in uh, medieval and well, pretty much. I just want to make something that looks really good. Um, because I, I have like a vision of the perfect texture pack, and I I've, I've yet to find one that really really just clicks with me. So uh. That's yeah, one of the other things I'm up to at the moment. Um, in addition, I'm going to hit 500 subscribers probably within the next couple of weeks, so uh, <laughs> I have no idea what to do for it. We did the, uh, the build-a-thon for 200, so i got to do something big for 500, so I just wanted to give a shout-out and see if anyone's got any good ideas, because it would be awesome to do something communal again, try and get everyone back together. Um, and yeah, aside from that, I'm also... I won't say I'm working on it yet, but I, I've, I'm trying to get an opportunity and find some time to work on um, a server. So, more details on that to come, so I hope you stay tuned. Um, anyway, that's all for now. I've been Mr. Archer MC, so uh, thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.